Okay, so we're moving into point C of unit one of the gospel is the power. Point C is the gospel proclamation. So what did Jesus say when he came and proclaimed the gospel? And we see that right there from the book of Matthew. Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I like to think of this. If you picture or you know your Bible, which many of you do, the story of Jonah. Jonah was a prophet of God who was sent to the city of Nineveh. And what was Jonah's message? Hey, everybody, the city is going to be destroyed if you don't repent. Right? So Jonah is like a, an example of Jesus. Jesus is coming and he's saying, repent because the kingdom of God is about to come and demolish the kingdom of this world. This whole world is about to be judged and destroyed. If you And so you are called to repent and believe the good news of the salvation that I have made available to you. So the people of Nineveh repented. The world has the opportunity, while Jesus is still at the right hand of the Father before he returns, to repent and believe in the salvation that Jesus Christ has made available to us. So Jesus, again, we've been talking about how the gospel is part of an ongoing story. Jesus is enter into, entering into a story that is already in motion. And the people of Israel who were anticipating their Messiah would have been familiar with Scripture pointing to the Messiah and the kingdom of God that was yet to come. And so we've got some of those scriptures listed here in the study guide. The kingdom of God and the day of judgment is coming soon. That's what Jesus was talking about. And he's referring to passages like we see from Daniel 2. In Daniel 2, Daniel is interpreting a dream and a vision that was had by Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, who was the most powerful king and ruler in the world at that time. And he saw uh, that various kingdoms were going to be destroyed in his vision, and Daniel is interpreting interpreting this vision to Nebuchadnezzar and the passage of Daniel 2. So for starting with verse 44, in the days of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. And Daniel goes on to confirm what Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. So the kingdom of God that is coming is going to demolish all other kingdoms, empires, no matter how powerful they are, no matter how many weapons they have, no matter how many people they have involved in them or under their power, all enemies of God will be destroyed. The kingdom of heaven is coming and all other kingdoms will be completely demolished. That is what Daniel is interpreting Nebuchadnezzar's dream to mean when he saw all these other empires that were just crushed to pieces by the coming of the kingdom of God. And this is what Jesus is proclaiming. So there's another vision from Daniel 7 where Daniel has his own vision, and it's it's the same. It's a mirror image of what Nebuchadnezzar had seen, but now Daniel is seeing a vision for himself. And it starts with verse 13. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. And he came to the ancient of days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, one that shall not be destroyed. So we've just talked in the, the last unit about how Jesus is saying, I am the one. I am the son of man. I am the Messiah. And so he's saying, I am the one that God is giving all dominion to, all power to, that everyone will serve. That he, Jesus is the one with everlasting dominion, that everyone in the whole world will 
serve. Hallelujah. Jesus is the judge, and he is the one appointed with all authority over all the earth. And then, so Jesus, it goes on to talk about that judgment. The court shall sit in judgment. And his, so I added in there, the Antichrist dominion, the the dominion of the kingdoms and the nations of this earth will be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end, completely and utterly destroyed. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. Hallelujah. This is what we talked about. The people of Israel are waiting for the time when all enemies of God are destroyed and the people of God are exalted to receive the eternal kingdom of God forever, where the new heavens and the new earth come and God dwells with his people in the new creation forever. And it's just going to be so amazing. I can hardly wait. But this is talking about that. After the whole world and all of the dominions of man are destroyed, the kingdom will be given to the saints of the Most High, those who have placed their faith in Jesus. And his kingdom, Jesus' kingdom, the kingdom of God is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Jesus is saying, I am the one. Remember, he is the son of David. He is the one who was promised an eternal kingdom that would never be destroyed. And he is the one fulfilling also these scriptures of Daniel saying, this is the Messiah that is coming. So, you know, this is the bad news. If you are an oppressor, if you are wicked or evil or sinful, or you have not yet placed your faith in Jesus, this is bad, bad news for you. You are going to down. You are done. You are toast. I don't know when, but your day is coming. If you do not believe in Jesus, this is really bad news for you. But the gospel is good news because why? We talked about this, and this is starting to be a recap of what we've covered. But the day of the Lord's favor is now. Now you have the opportunity to believe in Jesus and receive the blessing of God, to not be an enemy of God that will be destroyed in the day of wrath, but to be a child of God, a friend of God, a son or daughter of God. Hallelujah. So we see, again, Jesus said of himself, the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and he's proclaiming good news, but he's also proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. Well, the Apostle Paul in Second Corinthians takes that one step further, and he says, In the favorable time I have listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Again, he's quoting from Isaiah 49, verse 8. But Paul says, Hey, behold, now is the favorable time. Now is the day of salvation. It's now. Jesus has made the way now for you to believe. And if now was true for the Apostle Paul 2,000 years ago, how much more now is it now for you to believe Jesus and receive his salvation and the favor and the blessing of God in your life by believing and receiving the good news for you? If you are not an oppressor, if you are the humble or the poor, or you know your need for God, this is great news for you. This is great news for everyone in the whole world. No matter how bad you have been, Jesus Christ has come. You can turn and repent and believe in him and be saved. Hallelujah. And so moving into point two, that is exactly what the end of the book of Luke tells us. Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. So, you know, this message sometimes gets distorted. I know the love of God. I believe in the love of God. I live my life every day totally dependent on the love of God. 
But the message is not, God loves you, God loves you, God thinks everything you do is awesome. That is not the message. The message is that repentance for the forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in Jesus' name to all nations. What does that mean? Repent. Let's put it simply, friends. Let's be on equal terms here. Let's just make it real short and sweet. Stop being an enemy of God. That's what repentance is. Stop it. Whatever wickedness you're doing, whatever evil you're doing, all those things that you're doing that are displeasing to God, stop. So Peter talks about this. Well, Paul talks about this. That's the first one from Acts 26. Paul's commission, what he feels so driven to tell people the gospel about, is to open their eyes that they might turn. Repentance means to turn. It, repentance means that you're going one direction and you go, you stop and you turn around and you go the other direction. You are going west and then you turn around and you go east. That is repentance. You turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. And we're going to get really deep into understanding how whether you know it or not, you are under the power of Satan if you do not believe Jesus. But Jesus has come to redeem you from that. And in believing the gospel, you receive the forgiveness of your sins so that you are no longer enslaved or indebted to the evil one. You are no longer under the powers of darkness. I can't wait for that unit, but we're not there yet, so stay with me here. So Peter, on the day of Pentecost, his way of saying it is, save yourselves from this crooked generation. So I can almost picture like Jonah going into Nineveh. Hey, save yourselves. Repent. This whole city is about to be destroyed. Well, Peter's proclamation is slightly different because the whole world is going to be destroyed. And he's saying, save yourselves from this crooked generation. The whole world is in sin and wickedness and violence and perversion and evil. And Peter is saying, repent and save yourselves out of that. Uh, He goes on in a different speech. He's saying, repent, therefore, and turn back that your sins might be blotted out and that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. If you've been living in a cursed existence or under oppression, you know, then the Lord believing in the gospel and what Jesus has done for you, times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Jesus himself will come to dwell inside of you, which we'll get into to. He will come. The Holy Spirit will dwell inside of you. Refreshing will come. You will no longer be under the curse of God as an enemy of God, but you will be under the blessing of God. Eh, Hallelujah. What good news this truly is. And God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first. I love this. We don't think that repentance is a blessing. But Peter says in this same passage, he sent Jesus to you to bless you by turning every one of you from wickedness to bless you by turning from wickedness. You know, repentance sometimes is is thought of like, well, God wants me to give up everything I like. You know, that's no fun. Well, guess what? Being under the wrath of God is going to be a lot less fun than anything you think you're doing. Th- to turn from your sin and wickedness is a blessing. And I'm speaking from experience. I can honestly tell you, I had no idea how wicked I truly was until Jesus truly got a hold of my heart and my life, and he has changed me in so many ways that I was not expecting. It is a blessing to walk with God. It is a blessing to turn from wickedness. You know, all those problems you have in your life that you keep getting yourself into when you're led by the Holy Spirit, those things stop happening. God gives you wisdom. He gives you guidance. He gives you, I mean, it's just amazing the blessing that God pours out when we place our faith in Jesus Christ and turn from our wickedness. It is phenomenal. And we receive mercy from God, forgiveness 
of sin. We receive forgiveness for everything that made us to be an enemy of God. Peter said this, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Peter also said that the prophets all bear witness. Again, this is the continuing story. All of the prophets talk about the Messiah, that everyone who believes in him, Jew or Gentile, so those who were chosen by God to be God's people and those who were without salvation and without hope in the world, separated from God completely, everyone, Jew and Gentile, everyone who believes in Jesus receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hallelujah. Paul said it this way, Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man, and he's talking about Jesus, forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Hallelujah. Again, it's not God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God thinks you're awesome. No, the forgiveness of your sins is proclaimed to you. One of my favorite ways uh, or analogies of this is, uh, and I, I forget who said it, but that receiving the gospel is sometimes like receiving a beautiful wrapped gift, and you receive this gift, and you're like, oh, yay, I got a, I got a present. This is so wonderful. Let's see what's inside. And you open up the box, and inside is a giant bottle of mouthwash. Well, you know what? If you know that you have horrible breath, then mouthwash is truly a gift. But you have to be humble enough to admit that you need the mouthwash for the gift to even seem like a gift. Forgiveness of sins is proclaimed. You have to understand first that you are a sinner and that you need the mercy of God, that what you deserve based on your own behavior is the wrath of God. You deserve the death penalty from God for your own actions, for your own thoughts, not what anyone else did to you, but what you yourself have done. In your own heart, in your own mind, in your own actions, you have been selfish. You have been sinful. And you need the gospel. You need the forgiveness of sins to stand with a clean record before God. And that's what the gospel does. Paul says in Colossians 1, He, Jesus, has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. What did we just learn? When we place our faith in Jesus, we become part of the kingdom of God's beloved Son. So we become part of the people who will inherit and receive the kingdom of God when God sets up his kingdom in the world to come after destroying and demolishing all of his enemies and all other dominions of evil. Hallelujah. You, by placing your faith in Jesus, get transferred in to be one of the saints of God, the people of God. who receive not only redemption and the forgiveness of sins, but the kingdom of God, eternal life with God, now and in the age to come. Hallelujah. What wonderful news this is. And again, just wrapping this back with point C, it is to Israel first. Jesus came and his ministry was limited. He said, I came only for the lost sheep of Israel. He never left aside from as a baby when his parents took him down to Egypt and then they came back up, but he never left the confines of this small little area of the world. He came to proclaim the good news to God's chosen people, Israel. But it's not just for them. It is through them, but not just for them. And let's read Isaiah 49. And now the Lord says, this is about the Messiah. This is about Jesus. He who formed me from the womb to be his servant. So this is Jesus. Jesus was formed from the womb, in the womb of Mary, the seed of God to be God's servant, to bring Jacob, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, Jacob back to him, that Israel might be gathered to him. So Israel, his purpose, his mission, Jesus' mission is to bring Israel back to God. 
for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord. This is a holy and a high calling. This is a, a glorious thing, glorious commission, and my God has become my strength. But God says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and bring back the preserved of Israel. That's too small a deal. You know, these people who've been in rebellion against God for centuries, it's too small a thing just to bring them back. I will make you as a light for the nations. I will make you a light to the Gentiles that my salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. So God is opening it up completely to anyone who will believe. Hallelujah. Not just for Israel, but to anyone who will believe. And Paul says this, there is now in the gospel no distinction between Jew and Gentile. Some translations have that as Greek. It means Gentile. It means anyone who is not Jewish. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call upon him. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. So before Jesus, there were only two kinds of people in the world, Jews and Gentiles. Jews were the only people in the world with direct access to the Most High God, the Maker of heaven and earth. If you were not Jewish, if you were a Gentile, and you came to understand that the God of Israel was the Most High God and the Creator of heaven and earth, if you came to understand that the God of Israel is the God who flooded the earth in the days of Noah, that the God of Israel is the God who's going to judge the whole world by fire in the days to come, if you wanted to get with God, then you would have to convert and become Jewish. You would have to go through a conversion ceremony. If you were a male, you would have to be circumcised. If you were a female, you would have to go through a mikvah, a ritual cleansing. The man would probably have to go through a ritual cleansing and a mikvah also. But you would have to become Jewish, pledge your allegiance to the God of Israel, and put yourself totally, completely under the law of Moses in order to to live as an Israelite. That's how it was before Jesus. The Gentiles were subject to judgment. They were heathens. They were far from God. There was no God for them. All of their gods were false gods and idols. And that's what we see in the world today. False gods, false promises, not the real God, no hope, no hope of eternal life. But in the gospel— Now there are two types of people, those who believe Jesus and those who don't. Those who believe Jesus come from every nation, tribe, and tongue, and that includes Jews. It's first to the Jew, but it's not only to the Jew. And the Jews don't have any prominence or superiority in the gospel. Now, you know, so it's Jews and Gentiles together. There is no distinction. Everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will receive the benefits and blessings of the gospel. And we close with Revelation 5. They sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain. This is speaking of Jesus, the Lamb that was slain, seated on the throne. And by your blood, you ransomed a people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. Hallelujah. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. This is the gospel proclamation. Repent. Stop being an enemy of God. Receive mercy and the forgiveness of your sins through your faith in Jesus. And if you are a human being, this is for you. No matter what nation, tribe, tongue, or heritage you come from, this is for everyone. Hallelujah. But if you do not believe this, there is bad news. The day of judgment is coming and God will destroy all of his enemies. So today is the day. Today is the day to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to turn to him and to receive forgiveness, salvation, and the blessings of God in his favor 
the all that Jesus has made available to us through the gospel. Today is the day. Receive it, my friend, in Jesus' name.